welcome back to the workshop. So in the last episode, you saw me make all these bits here. So basically it's the quill support bracket that connects via these stiffening brackets here onto this back plate. And these run up and down on these linear rails here. And then also you've got the bellows bracket incorporated. So it kind of finishes off that area. So as you probably saw in the last episode, I wasn't super happy with the alignment of this and these rails. It's very, very close, but you can probably hear and see sort of judders ever so slightly. And when you let go, it doesn't fully retract. So if I slacken these off, then it will suddenly shoot up. So it's really close. Um, I could shim it, but I think what I'm going to do is just put a pair of grub screws. So one at the bottom here, or two at the bottom and two at the top. So four in total. And that'll allow me to completely dial this plate in and get it set reference to those bearings back there and get it just so, so it's really nice and smooth. Otherwise, it's basically just going to wear out the bore prematurely or wear the rails. So we'll come back to that problem in the future. For now, it doesn't stop us proceeding and making the rest of the bits that go around here. So when I move the quill up and down, obviously it moves this plate. And like a lot of drill presses, you've got a, a sort of a rod that would go on here. And then that runs in a housing and then that housing will come off a bracket that comes off here. And that'll allow me to do a couple of things. Or well, three things in total actually. One is I can limit the depth. So there'll be a collar on here and I'll be able to lock that off so that the, this can't go any further. So if you drilling a counterbore or something of a certain depth. Uh, the other thing you can do is if for some reason you just want to hold it at a certain position, you'll be able to lock it off and it will lock it against the rod. So it'll hold it there, stop it going back up again. Uh, you might be measuring something or whatever. And then the third thing is there's going to be a digital readout that comes off the side and that tells you the position. So if you're doing a counterbore or something, you get the depth from that. So I've got three functions and now we just need to make all the bits that go into that little sub-assembly. So I've got the drawings here for most of the parts that I need to make it and then I've started to pull together or order the bits of stock that I need to make all the different bits and pieces. Uh, so over here you can see this is the digital readout that I used on the old machine so that will be reused and then this this connects onto the base of the quill that goes up and down. It's just connects between the quill and the bottom of that uh, readout there. This is the main bracket if you like that comes out of the machine that holds this piece in place which is that bracket there. It's got a big hole through the centre and that's what the rod runs up and down through. Uh, and then just at the back there, there's some knobs and things to make to, to make the whole assembly work. And then here's the chrome rod that moves up and down. You can see that there. This is 16 millimeter rod. This is hardened outer casing. And basically I've just turned the outer down to the 10 millimeters I needed um, and then drilled and tapped for an M8 screw at the end there that holds the assembly in place. Um, I still yet to cut it down to the correct height, so I've just marked it up for now, just in case. Uh, let's get it all set up and then just double check that that is the height I want before we cut it. Also, you can see down here just some little brass washers that I made. So I just turned these down on the lathe, uh, put little chamfers on, drilled them out to 10.5, I think it was, um, and then just parted them off there, three millimeter washers. Just uh, spreads the load out a little bit between this when it bears on the aluminium because it runs in a slot. And so uh, where it goes together is that will go on first. Uh, then it goes through the 20 millimeter plate, the bit that holds the quill on. So it's the bit that kind of goes up and down. And then on the other side, that goes to there. And then I've just cut this little screw down there. That goes on there. And then that holds the whole assembly together. Uh, so the only thing left to do on this, you may be able to see on the drawing, is it just got a machine of flat one millimeters depth along there. And that's uh, for the little screw and the lock collar to get a bit of a bearing on rather than this round surface. Also stops this rotating and stops the other part rotating as well because of that flat. So that's that bit. Okay, so I think you can just about see there's a slot in here. And that suits this machine down part here. So that goes through there. And then that's why I went with this washer just to spread the load over that slot. Otherwise it would sort of maybe tend to dig into this soft aluminium. So we've got that one, and then we got the other washer underneath. And then, with my third hand. And it goes in there. So obviously this is in a slot, so it can be adjusted in and out, just so I can get it all nicely aligned. We'll keep it out outboard for now, because then it clears at the top. 
So that's there, and then so that moves up and down with the quill like that. So what we need now is the little piece it runs in. Okay, so just squared it up, so it should be 32 across there, uh, 40 across there, and 45.5 across there. Okay, so we'll mark it out for the tapped holes and the bore, and then we'll see you at the drill press. Okay, so we've got the part now in the vise, it's on the drill. I'm just gonna edge find off this edge and this edge, and then we can move over the right amount, and then we can drill and tap those holes. So you'll see I've actually already marked these on the surface plate, and then I've center punched them there. This is just double, triple checking, just while I get confident, because um, really, all you need to do is edge detect, move the correct amount, and drill and tap. So it's just like a, a double check that I'm definitely in the right place. So, um, right, let's pick up off this edge and this edge, and then we'll get tapping. Oh, oh. that's novel. Um, <laughs> the chuck came out of the quilt. Right, we'll tap that back in and then give that another go. Good job you weren't doing any milling with it. Yeah, exactly. That's why you can't use a drill press just as it is for a milling machine because a little bit of vibration, a little bit of side loading, and it can come out of the Taper. Anyway, right, we've tapped it back in. We'll just try that again. Okay, so on the drawing, that first hole is at 7.5 and 30, so we've just moved the table to there, and let's just check with our little spot drill. the table a bit. Without losing position. So this is a 6.5 millimeter drill. We'll drill it most of the way out with that. Um, I like to use my tapping drills just for the last little bit so they don't get worn out. Um, so it'll be a 6.8 for an M8. So we'll open up most of it with this. I should mention that um, I turned the drill speed down, so on my machine it was parameter 27, it was set to I think 15 hertz, which is a little bit quick for tapping, uh, I dropped it down to 10 hertz, I did try a lot lower, like 6 or 8, but when it was really deep into the hole, um, I did have it stall out once, so I've stayed at 10, which seems to be quite a nice compromise, so let's uh, tap this hole. OK, 
Okay, so I think for the small M8 holes that that is done. So we've tapped all the sides and then that's the lock screw. So we've just got this one to do, which is the big 16.1 hole. I think we'll set it up on the four jaw and we'll get a double center, so one center on there, try and get that centered up in the four jaw and then bore it out. Right, see you over at the lathe. Okay, as you can see, I've got the part in the four jaw now because I need to drill this hole off center. So I've got it reasonably close. As you can see, I've got um, a center in the tailstock and then a second center that's just jammed between there. So it picks up on that center and then that punch mark there. And then as I spin it, you can see obviously it's not in the center. So all we need to do is move these four jaws until the needle doesn't move basically, and then we're directly in line. Pretty good there. I think for what we're doing, that'll be absolutely fine. Right, let's bore the hole. Now on the drawing I called for 16.1 millimeters hole, so that's 16.05. I thought I'd just offer up that bar and just see if it's a nice sliding fit. If it is, I think uh, I'll leave it there. Okay, this is the rod that moves up and down and it sits in the quill plate here. Obviously it's a little bit long at the moment. I will just do a test fit. Yeah. Happy with that. Okay, with a bit of clean up, there it is. So that will be, I'll go in that way, and then that rod will go through there. Then we've got a thread there for the lock screw. And then these on either side are to hold it into that piece down there. So I guess we'll work on that one next. So this is the big bracket, if you like, that holds that block that we just made. That goes in there. So that should fit into that section. Obviously, we've got to get rid of the weld line there. So we'll just sand that back. Uh, then we've got to open up this. So we've got this clearance and then drill the three holes there. I think that's about it. Yeah, everything else just rounding over, making it look nice. And then we've got to bring it down to the final size. Um, and then there's like a plate that welds on the back and that will allow us to bolt it to the back of the machine. Right, let's mark this out, get cutting and drilling. Let's get going.
Hmm. I think it's fair to say that machining these two bits out has made these two distort with the residual stress. As you can see down there. And the other side. They've moved out. So I did just try hitting them, put them in the vise and trying to move them, but clearly that's not working. So I think what we'll try is just heating them up there and then just try and bend them, get them back into alignment because these two have got a clamp onto the block that's there. And yes, it will clamp up, but the idea is they're supposed to be in about the right place. So you can adjust the clamp and get that all nicely lined up and then just sort of tighten these up rather than fighting against it. All right, let's get the torch out and see what we can do. It's getting closer. <laughs> oh, some heat coming off that. Yep. I think it's pretty good. Right. It's still cooling down, but I just tried the block in there. Uh, just it's just a gentle tap just to get it to go in. So holds on up nicely. So I think it's going to work. Let's see what that's like down there. Yeah, looks all right. Okay, so before we go too much further, I thought I'd do a little mock-up and just make sure everything's going to fit. So we've got our big bracket here as a plate, uh, which is just here, which we're going to have to weld on in a minute. And just before I do that, I just want to make sure it was all going to go together okay. Uh, so that'll, that'll just weld onto there and there. And then those little pilot holes, I've left those small so then I can just drill through into here to mark to tap these M8 and then I'll open these up. So that's going to go on there. So that's that bit. And then, uh, just tighten that up so it doesn't fall. There we go. There's the block we made earlier. These are just temporary, so that's our little lock screw. I'll come up with something a little bit nicer. There's the bar we turned earlier, then the little washers. And you can see it lines up quite nicely. And then I just made this on the lathe, so I just turned it down to the right diameter, parted it off, and then I used the drill to use the half function to get into the middle here, and then drilled, and then used the jog function so to tap the hole. So it's quite nice to do that. So you can just slowly jog down and uh, tap that hole. So that worked really well. So, uh, so the idea of this is there's a couple of degrees of freedom where it can be adjusted because obviously you've got to get or make sure that this motion is nice and smooth because that clearance is quite small and you don't want it jamming up. You know, you can imagine 
depending on exactly uh, relationship between this and that axis it could bind up so these holes are quite large I think they're nine millimeters in here and it's a uh, eight millimeter bolts going to go in so we've got the uh, ability to align it this way because these are oversized and then also obviously we can align it that way because it's because it's round in here so those are the two degrees of freedom we need to align it on and once that's set then that should glide nice and easily through the center there without jamming up and then we can use this screw here just to lock it off because it locks onto that flat that's if you want to hold the height and then this is our depth stop so once you've got down to the uh, a certain height uh, like you counterboring or something you can just put that in there uh, and then it always stop at that same location so I'm pretty happy with it, it looks like it's going to be okay um, so let's take this off and then we'll tack weld it come back double check and then we'll do the final weld So to do the welding I'm going to use this MIG welder, this is 180 amp, uh, it's the newer IGPT technology so it's an awful lot lighter than they used to be in the past. I uh, bought this one off Artec, I've had it quite a while, um, use it quite a lot, I've been really pleased with it. So it's a great little hobby welder. Uh, now we're going to be welding 4mm plate um, in a butt joint, so the voltage is on, I think it was 5.5, and the wire speed we've got a 7, and we've got the set to about 150 amps here. And then for the gas, got that over here that's your regular argon co2 mix okay let's go do some welding okay so we've got the part set up here i've got a little datum clamp back there so i can push it against that and then i've got it scribed against this edge here so we've got 20 mil each side um, and i've just lined it up by eye down the side so we're just going to put a little fillet down there and then we'll turn it around to the other side now i don't like doing a lot of welding and filming because it can damage the ccd uh, camera on here the bit at the back there which detects the image because it's really bright so i'm going to give this a go uh, this is one of those replacement shields that you get inside the the helmet um, and it's got a couple of buttons you can configure things like this so it's auto detect so when it detects the arc it will change and you can do a little test down here just to make sure you're not going to blind yourself um, so if we just I don't know if you can see oh, you can just about see through if i press test now you can see it goes dark and then let go and there's a little delay and it comes back so hopefully that will give you a good view of the welding and it won't damage the camera so i'll clip this on and then we'll get going Okay, and after a bit of cleanup and a spray with that gunmetal grey spray paint, that looks pretty nice. So we've got some of the other bits down here. So this is the depth stop rod, and I've machined this little flat on it on here. That's what the little lock screw will go into. And then I turned this is a little locking collar. I didn't film this, but you can probably pretty much imagine how it's made. Just turn on the lathe, and then just spotted and drilled through there. Uh, these are only temporary, by the way, just to see. You know, what sort of length I want and what sort of feel and diameter. Yeah, watch them stay on for a long time, I know. Uh, but hopefully I'll put something better on in the future. Uh, so that's that. And then this is the depth stop. Now the block itself, that's here. So that goes into there. And it'll be like that. So this will be to lock it off any given height. And obviously that just bears onto that rod through there. Right. So we've got all the bits, got the fixings. Let's put it together. I'll just put those in loose for now. So on this side, the cap head, and on the other side, because it's not going to be easy to get to, uh, I've just got these regular head bolts. So that will go into there. Next, we'll put depth stop rod in and just tighten that up just to hold it and get it set up and we'll put the depth stop collar on there 
And again, that was another reason to have that flat on there because if it just backs off a little bit, it still doesn't want to rotate and it will stop it. You can imagine if it didn't have that, if it's just onto round, it sort of be at any position and it get jammed and get annoying. So if you just have it almost touching and you can slide it up and down and it won't get caught and it'll always be facing straight ahead. That's the idea anyway. All right, let's get that offered up. So we need our washer. loose for now. And then I've already drilled and tapped, or marked out, drilled and tapped the two M8 holes in the main frame. loose just so I can get this one in. Back it off a bit. Okay. So this is loose here, loose here, and that should be loose. So now I've got to find that happy position that they all want to be in. Okay, after a lot of messing about with it, doing the bolts in different orders, um, I think I lapped the inside of this as well. Also relieved the top a little bit so the bearing area was less, so in case there's any misalignment, it was less critical. Uh, put a little countersink on here, on this washer, just to make sure it's definitely going to sit nicely at 90 degrees. Um, and finally, we've got it to this, where it's beautifully smooth. Nicely aligned so nothing's fighting each other because obviously this is trying to go up and down in the bore Although this is not brilliantly located, but it is trying to go up and down that bore That's now concentric with that into there and these linear rails at the back. So they're all in line And now I can show you the features So there's two sort of main features on here. This one is the lock so you can lock it at a certain depth So so if you're just picking up off an edge or whatever you see you just lock that off and that stays there then when you undo it it springs back up again. Uh, the other one is if you're doing say counter bores, so you want to go to a certain depth. So if you just loosen it ever so slightly, it will still stay more or less uh, on that flat. So obviously if you do it too much, you can come out of the way and it gets a bit annoying, but just loosen it a little bit. So there's a couple of ways you could do it. Probably the best way is just to have it resting on there. Go down to the counter bore to the depth that you want and then just lock that off. And then that'll only go that far. Yeah. So as I say, I'll just see how I get on with these. See how you know if they get in your way, if things be bigger, come out more, whatever. And I'll make some really nice ones. But for now, I'll do the job. Yeah, very pleased. Okay, now that's working. I need to make a little L bracket that comes off here, and then there's a machine bracket that comes off the top there, and that will basically hold this digital readout in place. So the bracket will hold this bit at the bottom and then at the top it will go up to that top hole and then I need to make a different bracket because this one doesn't fit and that will hold this onto there so that will be stationary and then when this bar goes up and down obviously the mi middle piece will move up and down and I'll be able to read out how, how far I've drilled a hole or put a counter bore or whatever. So let's go and look at the stock for that and let's go and get those made up. So this is the lower bracket, this little L bracket, and I was having a look at what bits and offcuts I've got, and I think I can get it out of this. This is too small. Uh, so I can get it out of there and down there. And then it's just got two holes in it. One's uh, clearance, I think, for... Well, it was an M5. Now it'll need to be an M8, because uh, I have to open up that hole. And then there's another threaded one here. Oh, I called it out. I think it's M5, anyway. So that's that piece. Uh, and then the piece at the top, it's got this shape like that, so this provides a, there's a locking screw that goes in there, just to be a grub screw that holds it onto the main shaft that's going up and down. And then this is the fixing where the end of the readout goes for the digital readout. Uh, I think that's about it, everything else is just make it look nice. And then I think I can get it out of this, so it'll be about sort of that wide, sort of that sort of side like that. So I think we'll make this one first, we'll get this set up on the CNC machine, and I'll see you over there. 
Okay, so we're over at the CNC machine and you can see we've got the world's most complicated setup. I just didn't seem to have holes in just the right places, so I'll have to either make or invest in a proper fixture plate with lots of holes. Yeah, something for the future. Anyway, we've got it clamped down. Um, we got a very long bit in there because I've broken all my standard ones. Um, now, it did feel very light and I just looked on the box and it's a high speed steel one, which uh, normally I use carbide, so we'll see how we get on. Should be okay. Um, I'll just ease it in and just see how it wants to cut because it's quite long but uh, at least it'll go through that 20mm part so we've got it zeroed, we've got the code loaded up um, let's get started I okay, manually turned down the feed rates just to see how this high speed steel tool especially one at this length is going to cut uh, glad I did that because it was uh, chattering quite a lot and it didn't sound like it was very happy Normally I use carbide, but um, I must have missed that on the order. Just, oh, no wonder they were so cheap. But it took my time and we got all the way through there. Okay, we're just getting ready now to tap the two M5 holes. Uh, so I've just centered that one, put 4.2 mil tapping drill in there. And we'll just take that out just, and then tap it. Use the jog function just to gently go through. Right, we'll move over to this hole and do the same. Okay, we're currently at X10, so we need to go to X64, so we'll just wind it along. Alright, so we'll just clean up the bore inside there because it's probably put a little a little edge inside there and then I think it's done. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's all mounted up now. So I made this little L bracket off camera, I didn't bother showing that. The only other thing that's worth noting is that I knew it was going to be very tight and it was probably going to uh, interfere with this a millimetre or two, but I thought I'll just make it and then ju let's just see where it comes out. Um, and I just had to take a few millimetres off there, that's fine. So that's fully up now, and then this bolts across to the full extent. So obviously, the reed head now um, it reads off the depth, so if I hold that still. I don't know if you can see those numbers, probably not, but it'll read out, you know, I'm sure you've seen all these before. 
So the only thing that's left to do is to make a bracket that goes between here and here. Uh, yeah, otherwise it'll do that, it'll fall down. So, uh, yes, you could make just a simple L bracket that bolted on the back here and on here, but if, if, this, if this is not going up and down completely in line, then um, it may tend to sort of side load this and wear it excessively. So what I'll, I might do, uh, I had these spherical bearings on my last one, last little readout, and I might uh, hook it up so this connects to that and that connects to there. Then if it goes up and down in a very slightly different axis, then it will move ever so slightly and compensate, but generally it will still give you the vertical readout that you want. Um, so I'm going to have a little think about it. I deliberately didn't design this in CAD because this is the last connection to make, and we'll see what we've got and see what I can come up with. Something like that. So I've put a new battery in it now, so get a nice solid display. And then around the back here, we've got a 10 millimeter plate. That's just to bring it out, just to space it off. Then I've got two countersunk screws that take those little M3 screws into the back of the units so that holds it in place. And then we've got our little spherical joint at the bottom here, just in case there's any misalignment. And then that goes up to the top there and then just about to see, just got a little space that takes it back into there. So that holds the reed head stationary, and then the centre part can go up and down. So I think there's about 60 mil of travel on this quill, so let's bring it down and see what we've got. Yeah, 62. Perfect. Okay, so let's say you want to do a 10 millimeter counterbore. So you get the counterbore bit just touching the top surface, and you'd zero it off. So let's pretend we've done that. Uh, then move out, move the work out of the way, go down to 10. Oh, that's too much. So the work's off to one side so we can plunge down that 10. Then we'll, we'll lock this off and come back. Centralise over that hole again, so move the table and then we can go down. We can either use the readout, just to make sure we get to about 10, or we can um, go until we hit that stop collar. So a couple of different options there. So now we've got our quill depth stop. Really pleased with that, yeah. Looks pretty robust. I think that should do the job. Okay, I think that's it for this video. I'm really pleased how this turned out. That's really gonna add some nice functionality to the machine. So with the this hold there and then the depth stop there and a nice readout, it's good to have that back working again for the quill. Uh, yeah, really pleased with that, it's good progress. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and See you next time.